First up tonight, a victim preparing to testify against her accused rapist in Grand Rapids tells police that she discovered a threatening Bible verse and five bullets in an envelope left in her mailbox. That has led to witness intimidation charges against the suspect, and it's also raising questions about survivor safety. Target 8 investigator Ken Kolker spoke with the prosecutor and the victim. The suspect, already convicted of the rape charge, is awaiting trial here in Kent County Circuit Court on several witness intimidation charges. Oh, it was this envelope, and it just said my name, and it said a Proverbs verse, and then one for each of your family members, last warning. Um, and there were five bullets. And there were five bullets in the... Little envelope. I mean, one sure. bullet for each family member. She says she Googled the Bible verse, Proverbs 13, 3. Those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruin. My mind goes into, I don't know, panic mode. Um, and this was like a big morning, the morning that I was supposed to go in front of the jury and testify my story. She was set to testify at the Kent County Circuit Court trial last June of 46-year-old Lee Andrew Gray Jr., a repeat offender who was accused of raping her in his home and choking her until she was unconscious. I took it as a threat not to testify, not to go in, not to continue in with the trial. Um, yeah. Or else. In this day and age, Kent County Prosecutor Chris Becker says the case raises questions about victim safety. It's open season on victims and witnesses. Until recently, prosecutors redacted identifying information of victims, including addresses from police reports provided to the defense. But a state court of appeals ruling in May 2023, later supported by the state Supreme Court, no longer allows those redactions. Their address, their phone number, it's all public information. And so that's been a huge blow to really protecting victim rights. It's, it's appalling. In this case, it would not have been difficult to find the victim's address on the internet. But why, the prosecutor wonders, make it easier by including it in police reports. It takes away, like, some protection of, the, like, the victim, like, I don't know, they know exactly where I stay. She says she still would have testified at trial last June, but the suspect failed to show. Court records show he was arrested days later, then released again on bond. I mean, it was just like dumbfounded, like how? Like I got five bullets sent to my address the morning of my trial. Um, yeah, and I don't know, it was somehow just excused, like slap on the wrist. Talk about the prosecutor said Circuit Judge Scott Noto denied his office's request to revoke the bond. That's something you have to talk to the judge. I can't answer, I can't answer for that. That is something, you know, we brought it to their attention. The prosecutor's office put the victim up in a hotel for a few days for protection, and police installed security cameras on her home. Four months later in October, on the morning of the new trial date, the victim says someone slashed the tires on her car and her mom's car. She testified anyway. I didn't want any like amount of intimidation to make me back down. Like I was I was ready to like just say the truth and what happened and testify and then hopefully be heard and believed and then have a good outcome from it. And you were. Yes. Yeah. And I'm really proud. A jury convicted Gray of first-degree rape and assault by strangulation. Court records show Grand Rapids police later got a search warrant to get 10 writing samples from the suspect. They sent them to the Michigan State Police for analysis, but it's not clear what came of that. Gray was charged in November with three counts of witness intimidation, destruction of property, and of being a four-time offender. In another twist, Gray has asked for a new rape trial, claiming he was falsely convicted and that he has video evidence that prosecutors and police scared away his defense witnesses by threatening to arrest them. Officer saying we did things that we didn't do. A hearing is set for later this month on the suspect's request for a new rape trial. In the meantime, he's being held at the Kent County Jail and his attorney says he vigorously denies the intimidation charges. In Grand Rapids, I'm Target 8 investigator Ken Kolker. News 8 did reach out to Judge Noto over the question of the suspect's release on bond, but we did not hear back.